Morning and welcome back. You know, I love having this community on the channel, but one of the other sides of having that community is that you don't get away with anything. <laughs> and I knew when I posted the last video, 626, I could see all of that sawdust coming out of the back of my saw. I knew you guys weren't gonna let me get away with it. And you're right. I was a little lazy that morning. I did not sharpen the saw. Not making that mistake today. Good morning and welcome back to GP Outdoors. We got a lot going on today. First up, we got to finish splitting these rounds and get them stacked. Then we'll try to estimate how much more wood we need out of the forest to finish filling the shed right to the rafters. Then we'll load up the equipment in the big tool rack, hook up the trailers and head back with the tractors and see what we can find out in the forest today. I hope you folks will stick around. It is gonna be stunning. I'm Gord Potter and you're watching GP Outdoors. Cheers. One thing I wanted to mention, I appreciate all the support and the advice from a lot of you folks that do hand file, but like many things on the channel, sometimes I get information that is sort of conflicting between the two or between different opinions, I guess, or advice. And one of which is sharpening the teeth on this chain. A lot of folks say your teeth have to be the exact same size on both sides or, or you know, some teeth will heat up more than others or cause wear or the saw will pull. Other folks say, you know, however many strokes you put on one tooth, you have to put the exact same number of strokes and all the rest. But what I'm finding over the last few weeks is a lot of times, just like this morning, some of the teeth are more badly damaged or duller, you might say, than others, and they take more strokes. For example, some of these I put three or four strokes on, some I had to put seven or eight on in order to get the burrs and to get that clean edge and get everything cleaned up. And I, I'm not sure it makes sense that I'm supposed to try to remember which teeth I didn't do the seven or eight strokes on and go back and restroke them. So I'm still looking into it and I've been watching a lot of videos and there's differing opinions, but I think practically um, you stroke the teeth until you get that nice, clean, shiny, sharp edge and everything's cleaned out of it. And if it takes 10 strokes, it takes 10. If it takes three strokes, it takes three, I think. And I, I think it's just practical that you stroke each tooth individually and I do kind of agree with, at least in theory or in principle, that you want to try to keep your teeth generally the same size. You know, you don't want big teeth on one side and little teeth. But as far as sharpening them, I don't think it's practical, especially after you've been out, you know, bucking logs or dropping trees all day, that all of your teeth are only going to need the exact same number of strokes. Anyways, I'm kind of interested in your thoughts if you want to leave them in the comments. It'd help me out a lot.
done. It's not magic, it's Husky Bob. Let's take a look at where we're at. So we've made a pretty good dent so far in this final row. It's eight feet between these six by sixes and we're eight feet to the ceiling. So that means for every section, we've got two face cord, right? So we've got two for sure, probably three, three and a bit. So that's gonna give us one bush cord. We've got pretty much at least two here and another one there. So we're in for two bush cord which of course means <laughs> my estimate last week was off again. Let's head into the forest. So there's our first target. It's a maple, nice and tall, and it's leaning exactly where I want it to drop, which is good for me because I don't have the skills or expertise to make a tree fall the way I want if it's against its own natural lean. And as usual, I'm gonna clear away my escape route, get rid of all these small twigs and the things on the ground. One of the troubles in the fall is there's so many leaves on the ground, they cover up rocks that are butting out or, you know, holes in the forest floor or soft spots. So you can't really see where you're running. So you need to take a little walk around and make sure you've got some firm footing. You'll see today I'm using the MS-462 again with my 25 inch bar. I take a look at that tree, I'm sizing it up, I'm trying to take my time and trying to keep a level cut. That's not bad. It certainly helps when the saw is sharp, I promise you that. I'm trying to take my time with my front wedge cut, and it looks like I almost made it on that first cut. The wedge is loose, and all I need to do is just help it a little bit to get it out of there. As you folks know, as I've started to fell for the first time with this 462, I'm having a problem trying to make my two corners meet on the far side of my saw. There we go. And hey, not a bad cut. Much better than the ones from last week. So I'm pretty pleased with that. Here you'll see I'm trying something new, uh, which was recommended or suggested. I'm placing my bar and my saw into my front wedge cut so I can get a feel for the direction as well as, you know, the reasonableness of the level. I bring it out and I bring it around the back and then I lift it up a few inches to make my hinge cut. As you folks suggested, I'm taking my time. I take a look at both sides now of the tree to see how close I am to that hinge. And I know I've got a little bit more to go. Not much though. There she goes. Successful. It fell exactly where I wanted it to. We're good. I let the other guys know. Let's take a look at my handiwork here. It's looking pretty good, and as you can see by the smile on my face, I'm pretty happy with it. Never perfect, of course, but a big improvement over the four or five trees I felled over the last week. I'm starting to get the hang of it because using a heavier saw with a longer bar has clearly provided a bit of a challenge to me. For those of you on the channel, you know that I've had a 251 and then a 261 with an 18 inch bar for a number of years. And I was starting to get much more proficient using that 261 at felling trees. I very seldom ever had a problem making my wedge cuts meet at the corners, but I've definitely been having that trouble with the larger saw. My front cut is good. I think the hinge is pretty good. Back cut is not perfectly parallel to the front, but it's pretty close, I think. And they're reasonably level. I'm happy with it. This is our second target, much larger tree and, and high probability of getting hung up because the tree is leaning into kind of a nest of other trees with a large canopy of limbs. This one's gonna be a little more challenging for me because I'm right-handed and there's no safe exit to the right of the tree or to the right as you're looking. So I'm going to end up having to make my back cut on the left side of the tree, which is awkward for me. But safety first. I'll take my time. I'm keeping an eye on this tree because there's a lot of dead limbs up there and it's a much bigger tree. So important to clear the dead wood or tripping hazards out of your way for your exit. I'm taking my time, trying to find level. I'm not quite level, but I'm not too bad, I don't think. I 
It looks like there's a lot of sawdust, but I think that's more caused by the wind. The saw is really sharp and it's cutting really nicely today. I'm going to go around and take a look at the other side of that wedge cut. I had filmed this video before I released video number 626, which is where I was felling four or five other trees. And I agree with a lot of your comments. I think it's pretty clear I don't need a 25 inch bar to fall these trees. And I certainly don't need anything as powerful as the 462. And many of you had suggested that the reason I'm having a bit of trouble is because the bar is so long and the power head is so heavy compared to the 261 with the 18. And I think you're probably right. Another five or six pounds of weight. I'm not used to this saw. It's fairly new, as you know. But my purpose or my reasoning to keep using it is because I need to get more experience and more hours on that saw. Because it definitely feels different in your hands. has far more power than the 261. Take a look at how slow this falls. And, yep. <laughs> she got caught up all right. It was highly unlikely it was not going to get caught up. You'll see it in a second. Yeah. You got that urge to want to go in and try to cut at the back again? Not a good idea. There you see it in the background, just above my hand. And you'll see she's caught up in a whole bunch of trees. It was a little suspenseful for the first 10 or 15 minutes after, because every couple of minutes, Husky Bob and I would hear a big crack and we'd see that tree fall a little bit further as it was falling through those limbs. But she never did come down on her own. Husky Bob and Guy had to help it down a little bit. But we got her on the ground. We're just limbing this right now before we start to bucket. Just find it's much easier to get rid of the limbs first before you do anything else. Because really we just want to take it down to the wood that we want to harvest. As I mentioned before, over the years we've just learned that 8 foot lengths are kind of ideal for us here in the forest. Much easier to grapple and to swing between trees and obstacles down the trail to get to the trailer. And of course, multiples to 16 inches. You see I was down on my hands and knees because I wanted to make sure I was not going to be hitting a rock under there. And I think I'm pretty safe. I often have trouble trying to determine which side of the tree is under compression and which one is under tension. But I nailed this one because it was pretty obvious. I knew the top was under compression just because it was hanging between two different heights of ground. And it was a successful cut, so I'm pretty happy. This one here, once again, it's laying on the ground. Of course, there's undulations, but I'm not really sure which side is compression and which side is tension. I'm just really bad at gauging that. But you'll see I get under it as best I can to try to clear out to see if I can feel for rocks. When I'm cutting on the ground like this, my eyes are on that kerf. I'm waiting to see if it opens or closes. And you can probably see it's opening for me. So now I know the tension side is on the top and the compression side is on the bottom. So I know I'm safe to keep sawing at it slowly because I don't want to put the nose of my bar into the ground. We'll chain her up. Husky Bob's going to drag her out with the L-Series, and because of the awkwardness of where we are in the trail, we're pulling it out in 16-foot lengths as opposed to pulling the entire tree. That L-Series has incredible power and torque, and you've seen that in many videos. <laughs> Husky, he's got to let us know he's running that Husqvarna. He's like a kid in a candy store when he's out in the forest. I think it's probably his next favorite thing to minding his vegetable garden in the summertime. He's got a new chain on that husky today, so he's not taking any chances with rocks underneath it. 
So he'll make his top cut. But then you'll see he's going to ask for a little help. In comes my Homestead Implements Grapple, which I'm getting more and more used to. All I want to do here is get those lower tines in underneath the end of that log and try to get it to roll for him so he can finish his cut. I'm going to take my tine a little bit because I don't want to lift this because it's going to be awkward on my loader arms. All I want to do is push and lift to see if I can get it to roll. There we go. Such a beautiful day out today. Okay, and I think he needs me to roll it just a little bit further. There we go. You can see I don't want to lift a hardwood log this big on an angle. So I'm going to try to square the tractor up as best I can. And you'll see I'm going to try to lift and push that log to get it to come around perpendicular to the grapple. And now that I've got it in a position, I just use the teeth to get her to square up nice for me. And now I've got a good clean lift that I can take back to the trailer. You folks can probably tell I forgot to put the audio on in this part of the video. Rookie mistake, but hey, at least you get to hear my dulcet tones. I think guys just like to show off the power of that L-Series. See you later, Bobby. Stay wow, one trailer load. I think we got one more left because I've still got some logs back there. Yeah. That second one wasn't maple, it was ash. But hey, let's take a look at the stump now that it's cleared. Well, I have to admit, not as good as my first one for sure. I'm reasonably level or, or at least flat. Um, this was my line. I cleaned up my corners well. And once again, the corner nearest me seems to always meet. This one came really close. I, I didn't really have to do anything to clean it. I just had to get the, the little wedge out. And there's my hinge, but you'll see right here, I was cutting from this side, which is bad for me. I usually cut from the other side because I'm right-handed, but I had no choice because my escape route was not safe this way, so I had to go that way. But you'll see here, the tree is kind of going on this plane, but my cut is kind of like, let's see if I can do this for you. The cut's kind of like this instead of like this, but not too badly. And the hinge kind of worked out and it's reasonably level too. So anyways, not my best work, but little bits get a little better each time you do it, I think. So she turned out pretty good. Anyways, what a heap load of fun. I gotta be honest, beautiful fall day like this and hanging out with those two guys, Bob and Doug McKenzie, or the two Muppets from the balcony, I call them. They are so much fun. We just always have such a great time out here and it's such a gorgeous day, especially for the first week of November. Either way, we're just about wrapped up. We got one trailer back. I've got enough logs to fill a second. So I'm gonna keep grappling those back up out of the back, bring them up to where we park the trailer usually and drag those other logs in. And then we'll haul them back, drop them off and it's probably gonna wrap it up for today. Hope you enjoyed hanging out with us in the forest today. Aren't too many days like this left, I'm sure of it. Have a great week with your families. Please be kind to each other, and I'll see you again right here.
I'm Gord Potter, and you've been watching GP Outdoors. Cheers.